Okay guys, let's go through the three different methods for creating the quick zoom or the hyper zoom. We're going to first do the Sapphire plugin. Second, we're going to show how to do it with no plugins, just with the base uh, Resolve uh, and keyframing. And then third, we're going to use the dynamic zoom feature of Resolve. Um, we're going to do this with zoom out, zoom in, as well as a cross zoom. So the first thing we're going to do is do Sapphire. So I've got three clips here uh, to demonstrate uh, with Sapphire. So we're going to zoom, go from this first clip to zoom out, and then we're going to come turn right back around and then zoom into this uh, third clip, which is really just a copy of the first clip. Okay. Uh, we're going to do the same thing over here with the, um, without the plugin, and we're going to compare uh, the two to see uh, how it looks. Okay. So let's first go into our color tab and we'll select the first clip. So I've already uh, done some grading here for the uh, color effects. Um, so we're just going to ignore that. But I did pre-label two nodes that we're going to need uh, for the Sapphire plugin. So if you've got the Blur and Sharpen unit from Boris FX, that's all you need. You don't need full-blown Sapphire package. You just need the Blur and Sharpen unit. And then within there, you just need two of the, um, the effects. So we're going to go in here into our Blur and Sharpen unit. And we're going to take the first one, which is Blur Mo Curves. Okay. So we're going to add that in. The first thing I like to do is always set my defaults before I start uh, keyframing or dynamic keyframing. So the defaults we want is wrap X and Y, the reflect, um, and that's it for this um, effect. So we want to go to the end of the clip, and we're going to start here with the dynamic keyframe by selecting here. And for this first um, one, I'm going to set it to 1.2. Now I'm going to cursor over two key frame or two frames to the left we're going to set this to 1.04 then I'm going to go an additional frame to the left 1.01 .01. and then finally a final keyframe to the left we're just going to do one actually in order to do one I have to kind of back up and then undo it all right there we go so that it locks it in place so that's it for the first uh, effect node. Now let's go to this next node for the blur and we're going to use the blur motion plugin. Okay, so first thing I like to do is set my default. So 2z distance we want to set to 1 and then wrap x and y we set to reflect. Alright, so we're going to go back here. So we'll go to the end of the clip and we will set the Z distance, I'm sorry, let's set dynamic keyframing on. All right, so we're going to set the Z distance to 1.1. We're going to cursor over to the left one, two, three keyframes, and then we're going to set this back to one. Okay? All right, so that's it for this. We'll go to the second clip that we're zooming out into. In this case, again, I've done some grading and I've already pre-labeled the uh, nodes that we'll be using. We'll go ahead and add our effects. So the first one is blur mode curve. So since we're zooming out, we'll put it into here. All right, now we'll go ahead with our def uh, default settings, reflect for wrap X and Y. Now we'll turn on dynamic keyframing and we'll start here at the beginning of the clip this time and we'll set our Z distance to 0.7 then we'll cursor over two key two frames we'll make this one 0.9 and then we'll go one additional frame 0.95 and then finally the last frame which is one okay We'll do the same thing we did before with the uh, blur. So we'll go ahead and add the blur motion to that. We'll set our default, so Z distance, uh, two Z distance to one, and then the wrap X and Y to reflect. Okay, so now we'll turn on dynamic keyframe for, in this case, uh, corrector number five. I'll start here at the beginning of the clip, and we'll set this to 1.1. We'll cursor over three keyframes and then set that back to one. Okay, so that's it for our zoom out effect. Okay, now for us to go from this clip and then zoom back into the third clip, we'll um, go to the end of the clip 
And now we're going to adjust our zoom in. So we'll take the blur mode curves. Okay. And we'll set our defaults. So wrap X, wrap Y to reflect. Oh, missed it. Okay, so scroll back up. Now we will, we will set our dynamic keyframing. And the first one that we're going to set is 0.7. We'll cursor to the left two keyframes. We'll set this at 0.9. One keyframe, we'll set this at 0.95 and then our final keyframe will be at 1. Okay, and we're just going to use the same node, cor corrector node for the blur uh, for this example. So we'll start here at the end of the clip and we will set this to 1.1 and then we'll cursor over four keyframes. I'm sorry, three keyframes. And we will set this to one. So we have to kind of, there we go. Okay. All right. Now let's go to our final clip that we're zooming into. And we'll start here with the zoom in effect. So uh, Mo curves. And we'll set our defaults. So reflect, reflect. And we'll go ahead and turn on dynamic keyframing. And this setting will be. 1.2 will cursor to the right two keyframes that will put it at 1.04 will cursor to the right one keyframe we'll set this to 1.01 will cursor to the right another keyframe set that to one okay so we'll now we'll do the same thing for the blur so we'll get blur motion set our defaults 2z distance to one Wrap X, wrap Y to reflect up. Oh. Okay. So we'll turn on dynamic keyframing starting at the beginning of the clip. And we'll set this to 1.1. Cursor to the right, one, two, three keyframes. And set this back to, or three frames, set this back to one. All right, so let's see how it looks. Uh, did something wrong here. Let's go back in here and see what I did wrong. So, ah, I forgot to set my defaults. There we go. All right, missed it. Okay, looks like I have to do that everywhere. See, this is why we do the defaults at the beginning, so you don't have this problem. All right, here we go. Okay, so let's play it. Okay, all right, looks good. Okay, guys, let's go through the example without the plugin. Uh, so I've already enabled this group of clips here that we're going to use to demonstrate the zoom in and zoom out effect. So, one thing to note is in order for us to do this effectively, we will have to scale the first clip in the zoom out and the last clip in the zoom in. So in this example, since we're going from the ground shot to the overhead shot, um, this first clip will have to scale it. And then the last clip where we're zooming back down into, uh, we'll have to scale it. Usually that's not a big deal because most people use this effect or this transition a few seconds here or there, uh, but just want to call that out up front. Okay, so all we're going to need to use here is the inspector and we're going to set dynamic keyframes on the zooming effect. So let's start here at the edge of the first clip. So we're going to turn on our dynamic keyframing and for the zoom we're going to come in and select or set 1.1. So just like in the previous example we're going to cursor to the left two frames, set this 1.3, then we're going to cursor one frame 1.335 and then finally 1.35 so you may be wondering where these numbers came from these numbers match very closely with the sapphire example that way i use those numbers so that we can compare the two okay so now let's go to our second clip here we'll set the dynamic keyframing up 1.5 
we'll cursor to the right two frames, 1.15, one more frame, 1.05, and then a final frame, one. Okay, all right, so we've got the zoom out effect. Now let's go to the zoom effect. So we'll start here at the end, turn on our dynamic keyframing, 1.5, cursor to the left, one, two, 1.15, one additional frame, 1.05, and then the final frame, one. Okay, and then our last clip. So we'll turn on our dynamic keyframing, and it's going to be 1.1, cursor to the right, two, 1.3, one more, 1.335, and then our final one, 1.35. All right, so in all these examples, we used a total of five frames, just like with the Sapphire example. And you'll notice here, the final scaling of this is 1.35. Uh, so the first clip and the last clip are 1.35, and if you look in the middle of the of this clip, you'll notice that it's uh, one. So no, no scaling at all for the second clip in the zoom out and the first clip in the zoom in, okay? All right, now uh, for for some you know scenes, this looks okay, where you can uh, just perform this effect. You don't need the zoom blur. But I'm gonna just so that we replicate the uh, sapphire example, we're gonna go into the color. Here we go with the first clip, and we're going to just as I mentioned before, I've pre-labeled all of my um, nodes. So in this case, we only need one node or one effect from the Resolve library, which is zoom blur. So we'll add that. And we will set up our default, which is the border type to reflect. And since this is the first clip, we're going to start at the end of the, uh, the last frame in that clip. And we're going to come in here and turn on dynamic keyframing. And we're going to set the zoom blur to 0.5. We're going to cursor to the left, one, two, three, four uh, frames, and set this to zero. Okay. Now, you notice this is uh, uh, one additional frame than the Sapphire example, and that's because the two zooms aren't the same. Uh, Resolve zoom is different than the Sapphire zoom. But this is what I, uh, through trial and error, figured out would uh, get the best result that uh, mimicked uh, the Sapphire example. All right, so we'll go to our second clip here. We'll add our effect. We'll set our default. All right, so we'll turn on dynamic keyframing to finish out the zoom out. So we'll start here with 0.5, and we'll cursor to the right four frames and then set that to zero. So that's it for the zoom out. Now we'll go to the end of this clip for the zoom in. And so we'll go here and set the keyframe to 0.5, cursor to the left four frames, and then set that to zero, okay? All right, now for our last clip, again, we'll copy over the effect. We'll set our default, and we're at the first uh, frame, and we'll set that to 0.5. We'll cursor to the right, one, two, three, four, and set that to zero. All right, so let's see how it looks. Okay, it looks good. So let's compare that with the sapphire. So the first three clips were sapphire, if you remember. And let's I'm just going to play it all the way through and, and let you see the difference. Looks very close. Now, if you have a really critical eye, I want to call out when the zoom effect is at its peak with the resolve zoom blur you'll notice that it has this center point, okay? And with with uh, Sapphire, it doesn't have that, okay? So that's one one difference. And sometimes that's a problem um, on certain scenes, so just be aware of that. The other thing is Sapphire, you see this kind of mirror effect around uh, the edges. I find that that's a little, that's not that important, especially if you're using the zoom blur. With the zoom blur, it still allows you to get that, that sucking in effect uh, that, that makes the zoom in or out uh, so popular and, and so nice to use. So a couple of tips about uh, doing the zoom in or zoom out without the plug-in. I mentioned again, the first clip in the zoom out 
as well as the last clip in the zoom in, you have to scale up. There's no way around that. In this case, like I said, it was about 1.35. The second thing is uh, I recommend that you keep the transition short. In my examples, I use five total frames on a 24 FPS timeline. Now, some people like to drag out the zoom effect for 7 or 10 frames, and the only caution is it may or may not look as clean without the plug-in. Um, and that's mainly because you don't have that wraparound uh, mirror effect. The third point I want to mention is some transitions look better with zoom blur, while others do not. Um, and that, you know, uniform scenes like this where you've got it pretty uniform around the border, uh, probably you can get away with. Uh, maybe not using the zoom blur, but other scenes like where you've got high contrast scenes like a, a drone shot with a blue sky and, uh, you know, the dark mountains, that usually doesn't work very well without the blur. So I encourage you to, to use the blur uh, where needed, not to mention, especially without the plug-in, it helps to give you that sucking in effect, okay? All right, let's look at the dynamic zoom example. So we'll go over here to these clips here, we'll zoom in here, and... Um, enable them. Now what we're going to do for this dynamic zoom is we're going to demonstrate um, a cross zoom. So um, we're going to zoom into this first sign and then we're going to zoom out of the second sign. So it kind of creates this kind of bouncing effect. So what I've done is put markers in at points that I want to cut and basically it's on the fifth frame of the clip uh, just like in our previous examples. Oops. So I'm going to go and a blade cut it here and blade cut it there all right all right the next thing you want to do is we'll start here at the first clip that we're zooming into we'll go into our inspector and we'll go down to here this function called dynamic zoom and we're going to want to um, do what's known as we're going to swap first and then we're going to do ease in okay so if you look at this you see us zooming in and the ease in helps with the ramping effect uh, that you like with the zoom alright now we'll go to our second clip do the same thing or almost the same thing we're going to ease out and we're not going to swap here okay alright so let's look at this let's play it back alright it looks good now if you want to increase the amount of the zoom you highlight it and then you click here to go to dynamic zoom so what you want to do for the zoom in effect is you want to adjust the innermost box. So in this case, it's the red one. And we're just going to uh, pull it in there. And then on the second clip, it's the green one. We're going to pull that one in there also. I'm going to turn this off just so that we can see the effect. All right. That looks good. So I'm going to go really slow just so. Yeah, so. It's nice because that ramping effect really helps to accelerate the zooming as it transitions. Okay, so that's it. If you've got any questions on any one of these uh, procedures, uh, please leave it in the comment section. Otherwise, please like and subscribe. Peace.